Buti na lang we have two connections here, one in the office. Um, all right, so we're live already. Tapos, oh, cool, cool. we're gonna connect to our, ano, our friends from another group para mas maganda yung ating, ano, mas lumawak yung ating audience. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, people were paying attention to what we posted kanina. At sumali sila sa discussion because it's a very interesting discussion. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. I asked, I even asked some of our team members if they're free tonight. Kasi baka ah, may mga iba sa kanila gusto mm-hmm. din mag-start ng business. Mga ah, ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, That's so big of you, nice. ano, ah. Mikela, I mean, uh, usually uh, if you're a business owner and you have people I, under you, we wish them well. We wish them well. In fact, we have one of our managers before who left to run a farm, and now he comes to us regularly because he sells mga mushroom chips. Guys, sobrang mm-hmm. sarap. Grabe kami pinakayo namin sa office na tumbenta niya. Nice, 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 nice. Alam mo de, ano no? So you can really uh, have a business that that's sustainable. But at the same time, that will pave the way for your employees to grow at the same time. So in for the, me, that's that's the idea. You know, as you you help people to develop and to branch out on their own. I mean, I didn't. We don't want to be in business where people are enslaved to the company forever. You mm, want them to learn, and then if they come to you and say, "Sir, I want yeah. to move on," fantastic. The way sad, you know, yeah, you lose yeah. you lose you lose good talent. Mm. But if they're leaving for all the right reasons, you support for all the way. Tama, tama. Yeah, yeah. yeah and you want to create that. You want to create that sort of ano, upward mobility also in your company. Eh? It encourages people to exercise ano, diligence. Diba? It encourages people to 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 want to become better at their jobs, niba. Right? Yeah, Sometimes when, you know, they want to get and then, niba. Right? It, the it's a win-win situation, eh? Pag ganyan, eh? The way we operate is we treat each store. We say to the store managers, you treat it as if it's your business. How would you operate your own business? Practice mo na yan. Yeah. Tama, then, tama. Yeah. Yun, yun. That's good. That's good. That's a good, you know. Uh, Kasi, di ba, uh, ano eh, instinctively, if you're a businessman and if you're a shrewd mm-hmm. businessman, you wouldn't want your employees to leave, lalo na mga magagaling. So, oh, yeah. you would you would yeah, want them to yeah, be yeah. dependent on you. Or... No, yeah, yeah. It's a sad day. I mean, but you have to, you know, especially now, this day and age, people don't stay that long anymore. Uh, there's just yeah. a lot more options. But we don't always say yeah, like that. Of just, we're, we'll happily ref- refer you. And I know it's just that leave nicely and properly. Yeah. Kasi never, and we've had yeah. a lot Pro- of managers. Proper turnover. Yeah, and we've had a lot of managers leave and we've taken them back. Ah, talaga. Yeah, yeah. So they, they tried their luck and then it didn't work out. Tapos they, they came back and then you yeah. accept them. 100%. Basta maayos yung pag alis. All right, yeah. we're set. Faster than usual. Okay. We're ready to go. Ah, that's good. <laughs> Okay. Okay, good evening everyone. Welcome to another episode of Historiang Futbolero. I am with uh, yeah. John D. Bora, Mikel Paris of uh, Auntie Anne's, who's good also day. like uh, a semi-regular good for evening. this program. And it so happens that we need his expertise tonight because it's yeah, all about yeah. opening a business or running one. So, uh, expert, expertise yeah. ba? Uh, expertise, alis na ako, sandali lang. <laughs> <laughs> so, ang sinasabi nila sa mga, pag, ano, if you speak in Tagalog and you're talking about, a, partic- uh, you're talking in a... Okay, yes. Teo ng isang negosyo at gusto ninyo, kung gusto ninyong malaman papaano, Makinig po kayo kay Sir John D. Bora at saka Mikkel Paris <laughs> tonight. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Ayun, so, uh, you know, we have a few things that we want to start with. Obviously, kasi, let's, ano muna, let's set the the mood for the conversation. Obviously, nasa, ano tayo ngayon, nasa ECQ. Marami tayong mga kababayan na medyo nawala ng trabaho. Kung hindi ka naman nawala ng trabaho, ay uh, nag-aantay ka na lang sa iyong uh, employer para bayaran ka, para sweldohan ka, para meron kang pang sustain sa iyong pamilya. Ngayon, siyempre dahil marami rin yung malaki rin, madaming oras rin ang nabigay sa iyo na, ma- mapa- na mapaisip-isip ka sa anong gusto, na gusto yeah. mong mangyari sa iyong buhay, sa iyong kinabukasan, 
siguro dumating rin sa isip mo na baka kailangan mo na rin magsarili kasi ayaw mo na magkaroon ng boss at gusto mo rin maging sarili mong boss. So, nga, ang problema dyan, siyempre, natatakot ka kasi hindi mo alam anong unang gagawin kung gusto mo magtayo ng sarili mong negosyo. So, ito po yung programa natin ngayon. Sana po ay uh, samahan nyo kami para mapag-usapan natin. Ako, oh, I'm very interested in this as well because you never know. Baka your your yeah. career will not be enough in the uh, siguro mid-term, long-term uh, sa, sa, sa buhay mo and then you might want to diversify and the, the, the key word really for times like this is mm-hmm. uh, diversification. Kailangan mo na talaga mag-isip ng mga different alternatives sa iyong uh, income streams, uh-huh. sa mga sa pinagkakitaan mo. Ano kaya ang pwede mong gawin kung gusto mong magtayo ng sarili mong negosyo? Dito po si uh-huh. uh, John Dibora at si Michael Paris para pag-usapan yan. So, if you're ano, okay. if you can, if you can, yeah, we're ready, we're set. Uh, all you have to do is uh, send your questions, no? Yeah. Kasi uh-huh. si Michael, very hot on questions yan. Eh. Gustong-gusto niya yung merong interaction. Uh-huh. Kaya, sarap talaga kung meron kayo na, yeah. diba? So, gusto namin uh-huh. mag-post kayo ng messages right below. Tapos, i-send nyo mm-hmm. sa amin. At si Michael Tama. and John D. will be more than willing to answer your questions about how to open a business and paano magpatakbo ng negosyo. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's start with what I know, see our friend Ed said. The first mm-hmm. thing you have to think yeah. about now is value uh, proposition. Anong mm-hmm. ibig sabihin ng value proposition? Di ba produkto ang pinapag-usapan natin dito? Eh? Kung hindi ka magbibenta ng sarili mong services. Services, I mean, when I say services, ikaw mismo yung gagawa ng trabaho, babayaran ka. But if mm-hmm. you're planning to sell product, like for example, magaling ka magluto, Magaling ka ang gumawa ng milk tea. Uh-huh. Tapos gagawin uh-huh. mo siyang negosyo. Kasi yun ang magiging produkto mo. Ang tanong, anong value may bibigay mo sa iyong market? Ano yung kalagahan uh-huh. ng iyong uh, produkto para sa uh, merkado? So, let's start uh-huh. with John D. Anong, ano, what's your first take on that when it comes to value proposition? Well, you know, um, una-una, maraming salamat dun sa insight ni kaibigan ni Ed Goza, no? Because, you know, it's very important for us to focus on really what you can bring which is valuable. Kasi wala naman talagang tumatagal na negosyo where you bring nothing but uh, negativity or a negative value. It really has to be something which uh, uh, embodies a certain excellence. Uh, it's mm-hmm. very, very easy, for example, in, uh, in food retail, eh. Kung masarap yung pagkain mo, that's okay. your value proposition. Mm-hmm. Diba? In, uh, in logistics naman, kung magaling ka mag-deliver ng mga, uh, mga kung madaling ka mag- magaling ka mag-deliver ng mga packages mo, and it gets, uh, it gets to the recipient at the proper time, then that's your value proposition. But if you notice, lahat ng mga binanggit ko, what really ties them all together is that you're all able to do these things well. Mm-hmm. Diba? And that is why entrepreneurship is really, um, is really something which is available to everyone. Kasi lahat naman tayo nahakit, nahakilala whenever something is done well. Ah, diba? Whether or not it's our, uh, it's our mom's spaghetti o yung molo soup na ginagawa ng kapitbahay natin or even yung napakagandang mga goal na ginagawa ni Ron Poblete tuwing Atene Lasal dual meet. <laughs> Quality goals, no? Just don't give him an easy goal. Pag easy goal, wala. Malabo, malabo. Malabo talaga na sa'yo, Ron, yan. Pero kung bicycle kick, ah, pasok. Di ba? So, giving it time, you know, we all know how to recognize excellence, which is why entrepreneurship is really open to everyone. Lalong-lalo na sa'yo, you know. Okay, so, you have to establish yung, ano, yung produkto mo, uh, it giving value to your potential customers. So, pag uh-huh. na-establish mo yan, pag na-ano na, mo na talaga, uh, you know, you realistically, siyempre, da, dapat you have to make sure that your product is good. Uh-huh. Ngayon, really? Mikel, you, you mentioned na pag-usapan natin kanina, uh, Mikel happens to be, you know, you you, you manage uh, quite a big operation in uh, anti-ants. Um, you said something about, you were talking about scalability. So you have your value proposition, you have a product that you want to sell. So mukhang mabibenta mo, pero may isa pang tanong doon eh. Hindi lang sa mm-hmm. sellability ng produkto mo, but at the same yeah. time, kung, kung kaya mong yung, yung negosyo ay pwedeng mag-expand. Pwede mo siyang i-scale. 
Is that something also very important when thinking about putting up a business? Yes, yeah. um, there's actually quite a few things to consider. I mean, first thing lang is isipin natin ang Pilipinas is one of the most entrepreneurial nations I've ever come across. Uh, maglakad ka lang mm -hmm. sa street, di ba? Ang dami mga business dyan, whether it's vulcanizing, water station, pan panadiria, there's just so many. Whereas I didn't encounter that in other areas that I lived in before because I lived abroad also. No? So mm -hmm. parang the Filipino is yeah. inherent in inherently entrepreneurial. Um, whether tama, it's tama. super small type of business or large businesses that have turned out to be more successful, there's always some business around the corner. Now, when you yeah. talk about scalability, normally kasi with most businesses, nagsisimula yan ako. Oh, you touched upon it kanina, John. He said, magaling ka gumawa ng cake. Example, ang galing mo gumawa ng cake. You're, you made cake for your friends in a party. Yeah. And somebody says to you, wow, grabe, sobrang sarap nito. Gawin natin itong, gawin mo itong business, yayaman ka. And syempre, yeah, your, yeah. your first thing is like, oh, wait, no, 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 nobody will want to buy this. Hindi naman ganun kasarap. <laughs> and then all your friends are like, no, for sure, di ba? So you start uh -huh. making a few cakes na lang for your friends, your network. Okay? Uh -huh. And uh -huh. because of, mabait sila sa'yo, kahit di masarap yung cake mo, bibilin pa rin nila, di ba? But more often than not, <laughs> more often than not, like, masarap yung cake. No? And then, so, you, at some point, you start thinking, wait, actually, you know, this is a very, this, this is, there's a demand for this, and people are buying it. Business or large businesses so, that are not to be more successful. Sorry. There's no, uh -huh. there, so, sorry, people, people. So people are buying it nga, and then you, you start, you know, first you start in your kitchen, no? You make it in your kitchen, then you start bringing your kids to help you in the kitchen, your helpers, your husband, or whatever. Diba yun nga? And then start selling more. Then eventually you say, oh, how can I grow this? And so, or somebody will whisper to you and say, wait, I think you can, you can scale this up bigger, you can sell more. And that's sometimes for me where the problem starts with mm. most, most, ano, um, sometimes, whether it's not just cake, sometimes it's a really good small restaurant that you started uh, with your husband or whatever it is. Somebody whispers saying, oi, let's scale it up. If you're not ready, this is where the pitfalls start because you start making yeah. promises to, to customers about demand and quality that you cannot meet. So don't get yeah. like a problem. Oh, yeah. And we, we, you know, we, we, I, can, I can only speak for this from experience. No? Because when we took mm. over Auntie Anne's long time, yeah, there were 14 stores at the time. The brand wasn't that big. Um, but we had a commitment to our U.S. franchisee to open a certain number of stores. Mm. Now, um, the way we committed to open those numbers of stores, because well, it was 60 stores we had to open by, by this year, 2020, yeah. no? We staggered it na, kware, small na. Four this year, five, then seven, oh. then ten, then ten. So now we're opening ten a year. Because I wanted mm. to be sure that the ones that we opened, we knew the quality was right, the systems mm. were in place, yeah. we can we can train the people, ready na sila. Kasi nga, if I started opening 20 antians, even if I had, kware, I had all the money, my, my family, the tita gave yeah. me all the money, say, oh, Mikael, open 20 antians, kanong bahala dyan. If we didn't have the systems in place, we would have fallen flat on our face. And you know, mm. that's that's what sometimes that's what happens. Uh, you have friends and uh, customers that mean mean well and say, "You scale up, scale yeah. up." Pero yun, do pa scale up, scale up. Oh, that's good. Um, you said something about systems, because, syempre, we were talking about kanina early on in the conversation about the product mismo, uh, the quality of the product. Syempre, if you don't have a product, you'll be selling yourself as well. But at the same time, if you're like what you said, Kanina, if people tell you na kunyari, ilagay natin sa perspective of somebody who, can, who sells his uh, his services. Kunyari, magaling ka na graphics designer. Tapos, mm -hmm. i-hire ka ng mga kaibigan mo. Oh, ikaw naman gumawa ng aking website. Gumawa ka ng, ano ko, ng mga design ko para sa, sa aking mga Facebook pages. Ganyan, ganyan. Pero, pag sinabi nila, oh, galing mo talaga, tapos isiscale uh -huh. mo na to. Siyempre, hindi mo naman pwede i-duplicate sarili mo. Ngayon, dyan papasok, I guess, after the product, is the system. Eric, your background as yeah. uh, somebody who Amen. manages a business, Yon. how important is a system in place for a business? Uh, uh, first of all, uh, good evening, guys. I mean, and, and I'm really sorry I'm late. I, <laughs> the weather was so inviting. <laughs> so, so, uh, I fell asleep while waiting. Uh, a system is very, very, uh, uh, a good system is crucial. No, in 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 any business, um, kasi kung hindi, parang you're just shooting the stars lang, uh, shooting at the stars. Uh, I think a good system will help you become more efficient and become more, uh, and productive. No, uh, I'm I'm just I'm thinking on the context of what Mikel was saying, but I couldn't really think uh -huh. of anything. 
<laughs> but because uh-huh. I'm not from the food industry, so I wouldn't have <laughs> any, you know. But in terms of um, in terms of selling, it's good yeah. to have uh, like a diagram of how you're going to sell, like a sales process. Mm. Um, okay. uh, so you start with probably uh, building rapport. Once you build rapport already, you start uh, introducing uh, the company or or the service that you're uh, that you're offering, and then you, you move forward now also. Uh, very mm. important also is when you want to uh, when when you when you realize that pwede na siyang close because there are some people who uh, parang too much selling already so they're you're overselling na so you have to you have to realize also or you also have to catch yung mga yung mga cues ng client mo na okay na pala siya parang hindi na hindi mo na, you don't really have to explain more parang sold na siya there are times kasi na sobrang nag-oversell yung mga tao na minsan parang okay, tama na, uh-uh. bibili na ako, something tama. like that. You know, kasi I, some, I sometimes wonder, di ba, like uh, we mm-hmm. watch how billionaires become billionaires. And they started off from scratch. Like, uh, siguro the, mm-hmm. the more prominent ones is Bill Gates when he was still a programmer. He came up with an idea. He created... Uh, Saan ba siya nagsimula? Windows, di ba? Ginawa niya yung Windows, naging, big, mm. malak- naging malaking produkto. But obviously, um, the the other systems that are involved in running a business, like for example, kagaya na sabi ni Eric, you have to have good sales force to 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 blow up uh-huh. your, your your business. And and so, John D., my question is, sige, yeah. meron ka ng idea, you have a product that you want to sell, Obviously, I understand for me to be able to sell this well is I have to have a at least one or two people who can market my product. And at the same time, you so have to have... People, yeah. Yes, and then you have to have the, on the back end the ones who are creating the product. So mm-hmm. if you're starting a new business, is it okay to start with by yourself or you really have to help, get help right away if you think your product is going to sell more? Well, you know, like in like like uh, you can explain to you, Michael, right? It's the honeymoon part of the business when you're working with just yourself and your immediate family, eh? Because immediately, because you you're you're surrounded by people who love you and support you, and you really have their best interests at heart, right? I'm not saying that they whoever you will hire will not have uh, your best interests at heart, but it won't come with that built-in and a safety net, eh? Right? The the, the 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 hardest part of any business venture talaga if in being an entrepreneur is really taking the first step but once you've done that already diba, then it's time for you to start involving people simply because diba, unless of course you're a family of superheroes you won't have all of the talents in your own family diba? <laughs> so you're gonna have to look no. outside your family in order to to find people now you can identify can do the things that you do only better so it becomes very important for you to rebuild that family system diba, with other people who are not in your family. And the best way to do that is really for them to be infected with the same sort of enthusiasm that you and your family have for your product. And normally, that happens when you teach them. Eh? Mm. So you start teaching them about your product and the way that you normally make it, etc., etc., diba? then they catch the passion. And once they catch the passion, if you're doing it correctly, if you're integrating them properly by respecting their opinions and then showing that you know you have been very deliberate in making your own product, then they can start giving you constructive feedback. Ah, ganun pala yung paggawa niyo ng cake. Alam mo yun, sir, maganda yung ginagawa niyo. Kasi lang, when you're making 100 cakes, mahirap na yan eh. Ang ginagawa namin, ganun. And you suddenly begin a conversation in which you know, uh, the people that are working with you actually help you improve in-house your product and the delivery of the product itself. Eh? So, you know, people uh-huh. and teaching people to, to be as passionate about your product or your service or your business as you are, I, I think that's uh, one of the most important steps in trying to set up efficient and effective backroom operations. Eh? 
to, to add to that, I think what John yeah. said is spot on. I mean, you are the expert, and this is why we defer to you. <laughs> um, and, and that's very, I, I touched upon this before again, Auntie Anne, in the previous uh, uh -huh. vlog of ours, is that you, know, you have to make uh -huh. people feel like they are part of something bigger. No? Uh -huh. But going back to like to the systems and stuff, there's several ways to look at it. You know, some people, you can start from your own small mom and pop operation, and you have to scale it up. So you have to work on systems. And you, when you're trying to work on a system you rely on your network yeah. so normally you have a friend who's good at this or all this you get yeah. referred and they'll help you uh -huh. build that but on the other yeah. side of it there's other people the man who want to start with a franchise because with the franchise yeah. there's already a built-in system there mm. they they there's like for, let's say for example and for us in anti answers what they call like the bible basically like the brand guide no tells you everything you yeah. need to know everything you need to do how to make the bread seller all sorts of stuff and all the other franchises that's what they sell to you basically is you don't have to worry about all this other stuff anymore um it is your business it's your business obviously you'll pay royalties whatever yeah. But here's the system, run away with it. And we will be here to support yeah. you. So apparently you don't have to reinvent yeah. everything. No? So that's one side of it, which is the franchise yeah. model. And there's all sorts of franchise organizations here in the Philippines. You've seen them and almost, you, everybody has a friend who has a franchise of something, normally potato corner or milk tea. Um, but but yeah. generally it, it, it's there and there's that kind of model that you can rely on. But the harder side of it is exactly what you guys were talking about earlier, is if you're starting from scratch. If you know how to make that yeah. cake, ang galing mo gumawa ng cake na yan, it's how you teach the other people who will be working with yeah. you to make make exactly the same cake at that quality. That's where the challenge uh -huh. is. And that's where you have to write that up. And, you know, it's recipes. And John, you said very early on, the correct thing is collaboration uh -huh. with your team. Because, you know, you'll be doing this thing for so long, you think ang galing-galing mo na. But yung pala, there are better ways out there to make it faster, make it, you know, to, to mass produce it. And then you talk, you start taking their opinions, you, but you have to be open to opinions. Um, you have to be open to constructive criticism because sometimes the danger is because at the time of pride, feeling natin, alam na natin lahat, this is really the best, and wala na yung mga nixe bang tao. And so that's where I think the pitfalls also lie. The, the reason why we're talking about food right now is because yeah. obviously the easiest thing to sell right now in this situation would be food. And we have uh -huh. like del delivery services like Grab. We have uh, Food Panda. You can tie up with them, and they can de they can actually deliver your food for yeah. you. So, uh -huh. siempre, uh -huh. the, the most logical thing to do if you're at home right now thinking, okay, I'm good at cooking a particular dish. How can I actually uh -huh. make? How can I earn from this? So that's the basic uh -huh. question. So, Mikel, mm -hmm. how do you create a system from scratch? Who? Okay. <laughs> so, the okay. very okay. product. The si, oh. uh, example ko kanina. Okay, see, si, you're 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 good at uh, making molo, and then meron ka na pangalan oh. for the business. It's gonna yeah. be Hans Molo, all right? And then we're <laughs> <laughs> gonna call it Hans. Huh? Copyright. 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 Okay, like I said earlier, I'm blessed because we follow an anti and uh, global system, but we're yeah. allowed to tweak it and do certain things to match the local market. But having said that, I've also been fortunate enough to give advice to other business um, you know, owners who are starting small and all that. Um, I'm a big believer and a firm believer that there's no point reinventing the wheel. Okay, what I mean by that is somebody somewhere has done something similar. It may not be the exact same product, but the way that they did it or yeah. the way they wrote a system no, so my kaibigan yeah. ka na dyan na ng business, and you can start leaning yeah. on them. And so, you know, most people are willing to share, um, as long as it's not copyrighted or trademark, whatever it is. is yeah. You know, we we as Filipinos, I think, generally are more yeah. open to sharing ideas with, with friends. You know, we'd call uh -huh. one another and say, "Can you help me?" So they will have like one example. It's on brand manual, lam, and this is how we operate. This is how we make things. So you will just tweak it to what you're making. So i.e., cake, molo. Or whatever mm -hmm. it is, but you are yung step by step na ano there like uh, you know what what you need uh -huh. in that manual so that you can easily train it to your employees. It's up to you not to fill in the blanks there, but generally there's already a guide. And the other thing is we live in the golden age of the internet. Um, yeah. Almost <laughs> almost everything you need is on the internet. There are so many resources, whether free or paid, where you can learn so much from the internet. And we all learned that during this COVID time now. We've had two months off where people have opened up all sorts of learning avenues that normally you pay for. 
Diba? Ang dami na people did all sorts of courses and all sorts of people learned yeah. so many different skills throughout this time. But you know, use the internet and use other resources you have available. But yeah. for me, really, is lean on your network of friends, your network of family. Um, there are people already who have many successful businesses. You know, we have people like John D that we can call and say, hey, John D, I have an idea. Can you help me? <laughs> Um, and, you know, it's, it's just really, and, you know, seriously, there's really lots of people like that. And that's where you develop a system. Because what, what you're looking for in a system is that it's something that can be easily understood and passed on to other people within your team. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you don't want to make a system that's overly complicated. It's like yeah. and boring as hell. That pag bitpan pinasa mo na sa training team mo kahit yung training team mo ayon lang ituro don sa mga kasi boring. <laughs> it has to be something. And also, what we have to what we have to remember yeah. this day and age, uh, the the method of teaching is different to before. Um, yeah. The yeah. attention spans of people are different. You know, the the whole classroom sit there for eight hours and listen to a guy talk to you. That doesn't. It doesn't work anymore. So even kami sa antiants, we've had to evolve. You know, you use technology, Amen. lots of interactive stuff. But anyway, so going back, so the system has to be the same. Although the basics should be in there. Um, you should have things there that are pretty much non-negotiable. Like this is what we need. Um, this is what, if, if you're going to follow this recipe for the molo example. Because mm. what you don't want is that all of a sudden, without you knowing, or, or something that you weren't that's not part of your thing no? you like you wanted to collaborate with you beforehand not bigla na lang they start sending out your molo yung hands molo mo iba na yung <laughs> iba na yung recipe ko diba? but you know so the system has to be methodical it has to be easy to understand um, and that you can spread it around if mm -hmm. be, if yeah. you're scaling up okay. Okay. Yeah. so you, you know, set up the yeah, yeah, go Jenny Michael, no? when it comes to teaching the system diba um, uh, there is an action in teaching na teach me, I will forget. Show me, I may remember. Involve me, and I will understand. Mm -hmm. So, in the way in which you teach the system, kasi, I agree with Mikel, eh. it has to be something which is eminently practical already, which means na you have to teach them mostly by involving them in the entire process. Eh. You say that, you know, this is, the, this, is the, this is the manual over here, no? But then in order for you to understand why it's important for us to follow the manual, but let's go to it together. So, you know, I, I think that's a very important no matter what business you're in. So most of the, since we're talking about like the food business right here, right? In a way, because <laughs> like I said. We're <laughs> <laughs> Si Eric may kasalanan. Si Food yung ano talaga eh. I think yung pinaka-obvious na choice uh, to, if you're gonna put up a business, that's the obvious choice. Magtayo ka ng karinderia, magtayo ka ng uh, yung ano, uh, food stall sa plaza, or siguro yeah. ng delivery business mo. So, we napag-usapan natin paano mag-create ng system. Siyempre, it will involve uh, yung mga uh, obvious na resources in terms of people and also supplies. So, kailangan mo i-consolidate yeah. lahat ito, maintindihan mo, o sino, kakasaan ko ba kukunin yung supplies ko para sa paggawa ng molo? Sino ba ang aking i-hire na maging chef? Sino yung mga katulong niya doon sa tindahan? So, lahat yun, na-establish yeah. mo na yung, yung, yung staffing mo. Tapos, part of the system is also how to create the molo and how to sell it. So, now, let yeah. me ask Eric yeah. here. You talk about the system, Eric, when it comes to selling your product, Guys, sabi mo kanina, you will have to build yeah. rapport with your customers. And of course, mm. in this day and age, very important na magkaroon ka ng um, uh, online presence. Maraming nagbibenta na kailang produkto sa Facebook, nagbibenta sa tini-Twitter nila, nag instagram Rick, ano ang importance ng marketing naman at saka sales para makabenta ka ng produkto mo? Well, definitely marketing... Uh, it will help you with your reach no, uh, to other people. But for me, kasi the best marketing is word of mouth. Word of oh, yeah. mouth yeah. really spreads like fire. So for example, di ba, first time ko kumain ng pretzels from ano, Auntie Anne's, and I really liked it, yung cream cheese pretzels nila. So I'm like, pwede kong sabihin sa'yo, like, uh, Ron, try mo tong pretzels ng Auntie Anne's, pare. It's really the best. Mm -hmm. right? So um, mm -hmm. that actually helps. But also yung mga visuals, no? like for example, uh, Filipinos, kasi well, people in general are very visual people. So pag nakikita sila ng mga like Instagram posts, uh, 
Example yeah. lang, no? yung mga foodie friends natin sa on, sa social media. Pag uh-huh. magpo-post sila ng na mga nabibili nilang pagkain, ang laki ng curiosity natin kagad if it catches us. For example, yeah. a burger. Tapos ang ganda ng pagkakuha, tapos pinost niya sa Instagram yeah. niya. Tatanong ko kagad, bro, saan yan? Saan mo nabili yan? And then you actually mm-hmm. go out and try it, di ba? So there, there's a lot of, ano, there's a lot of traction if you do that, no? It doesn't really have to be strictly yung, yung marketing na kailangan mo yeah. na way. May ano, but you just need to reach out to people and you, and the best, one of the best mediums really now is uh, social media. Kasi everyone's on Facebook, everyone's on Instagram, ginagamit ng lahat. So, um, malaking tulong actually. Um, there was a time that uh, a friend of mine baked ano, uh, cinnamon rolls. Uh-huh. Tapos, pinost ko lang. Sabi ko, ang sarap, ganun. Tapos, uh, two or three friends of mine nagtanong, saan mo nabili yan? Ay, mm. ano mo yan? Message mo lang tong friend ko. So, pinadala ko yung link ng profile niya. Tapos sila na nag-usap. So, to that point, alam mo yun. So, I think really, word of mouth uh, is actually uh, parang ano ba? Oh, wait. Social media is like word of mouth on steroids. Mm. So, mm-hmm. kung maganda yung ano <laughs> Maganda yeah. yung post mo. It can, it can go both yung, ways. Ano? <laughs> it can go both ways. That's right. That's right. Kasi ano yeah. rin eh, kunyari, nag, uh, hinayip mo yung produkto mo, sabihin mo, ha, sarap talaga, tapos bigla nila natikman yeah. ng mga tao. And then, it's contrary to what you're saying. Tapos sabihin nila, ano? sinungaling yun ah. Ang pangit ng lasa nito. And they're gonna say it on, on social oh, media. I, I, I have Ooh, a lot to say about that. Too. <laughs> oh. uh, Firstly, tama, guys, tama, um, shout out lang to my Southridge friends who are all there in the comment section. Um, Ay, you, guys, you guys know, <laughs> John, John, Dino, John Dino sa lahat of that. And also, happy birthday to <laughs> Hubert's wife, Laura. Um, yeah. Thank you for watching. Happy birthday. No? Um, but just oh, to wow. add to, galing, to what galing. Eric said about the, the marketing, yes, it's super important. Like if For us in Antians, you know, we have 65 stores. You won't uh-huh. necessarily see mga billboards and stuff for us. We really believe in social media uh, marketing. That's where we spend all of our marketing budget. Um, and I am very heavily involved in the marketing um, because, you know, even the Facebook, believe it or not, every comment, email, message, or like goes straight to me also. Wow. So I, I get to see it and I uh-huh. get to reply to customers regularly. Because, you know, like I said, sometimes, you know, like word of mouth is huge. It's very important. Uh-huh. Right? They, they like a product, but also at the same time, it's... Yeah, if something goes wrong, which it will go wrong in any business, you're not perfect. Um, there will be times where there's an issue. And the person normally will reach out to your Facebook page or whatever. And if you reply right away and you uh-huh. show sincerity na sino ka, like, uh-huh. why me? Magulat na lang sila na the actual CEO is the one replying to the concern. And you try to That's make true. amends right away. You put your hands up, say, I'm sorry. It's resolved and it's actually turned into a good news story. Whereas oh, there are some yeah. instances na talaga nagmayabang ka na, nagmapilit ka, no, you were wrong, customers, wrong, how they, whatever, and uh-huh. just on. Then she starts sharing that on Facebook and mm, Instagram uh-huh. and, you know, it, and it just becomes uh, much worse. Whereas I'm there's I'm things I'm that you can deal with. But um, again, it depends on the size of the business, how many people you have to be able to react, I'm how many customers you have. But there's also, like, with social media, I don't know if you guys have ever come across yung, si website, yung Instagram page na masarap ba? Oh, that's an yeah. excellent. Oh, so simple. Yeah. That's a, so yeah, so, simple, but, but that's you know, but you know exactly that, what you're gonna get when you go, that, when you go but, there. But that that's an example of how it could go well or wrong. If you get featured, yeah. na hindi ka masarap, you know they're taking oh, the my. word. They're taking the word of one person before they've never tried your oh. product. You know, most people won't uh-huh. even try it na lang for themselves nowadays. Sabi ni masarap ba, hindi siya masarap. Please lang masarap ba if you're watching this. Uh, please try and don't say anything <laughs> bad. Um, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I love your comments. You're hilarious. I really love it. I live in fear that you'll feature us and say it's not good. But yun nga lang, it's just the power of social media. Yes. So with business owners, yun nga lang, it's just going back. It's just like, there's so many things to contend with in business these days. Na tama, tama. Before, you didn't have to worry about all of these things. The networks were much uh-huh. smaller. In the same way that your business can reach so many more people and you can scale it, it's just also so many more ways it can go wrong. 
So yeah. this is where you have to tread carefully and you know you take advice from whoever it is to to help. Because it's a bit hard to get out of that. We are uh, not such a forgiving society nowadays. You know, you see something on Facebook, somebody posts, somebody made a mistake, and immediately yeah. without asking for the other side of the story, we vilify that person. It gets shared. You know, we see it all over the news now, de right? Uh, mm -hmm. So that's one of those things I worry about. No, no, no. Yeah, so it's really important, Rina. No, no. I agree yeah, with Michael. Eh. Um, there is a proper, because there's a. He was talking about um, the ability to respond um, uh, courteously and with great humility, because to the people who are really, really concerned about you know either getting your product, you really have a problem with it, could easily be resolved, niba. Right? Uh, I think that one of the things which makes it easy for people to relate to your product or service, because is if it reflects. The same sort of values that they hold there, which is why I think that um, if you have a posture of humility, diba? if you have a posture of um, uh, industriousness, diba? there is so much more for you to, there, there's so much positivity you can generate from that as opposed to malakas masyadong the thing when you have a certain arrogance associated to your yeah. product. Eh, diba? Because that way you can never have a bad day. Kung ka, you can never have an off day. Kung hindi, ka, eh. But yeah. then, you know, if you are um, if 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 uh, if you have a posture of humility, if you really really care about the product, if you yourself are mortified whenever something doesn't turn out right, then the more people will be uh, will be inclined to not only forgive your offense, but quite possibly it can also generate a greater interest in you after that. Eh? Because after yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah. If you if Mikhail, you, if you have, is very familiar with that. Eh? The thing is for us, you have to have like an attachment with your co customers. You know, don't treat them like they're just there to buy yeah. from you and give you money. No, like uh -huh. I said, the reason people laugh at me sometimes is saying, Mikael, you have how many stores and how many, but you still answer all the Facebook. Uh, we have a marketing team that deals with it, but I'm still very yeah. part of it because I check it and sometimes if I see something went wrong, I like John D said, the word right is mortified. I'm like, oh my God, you know, we 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 we, we really let somebody down. Yeah. Um, immediately, I, I, I send a message to the person, no matter how angry or how nice. But uh, uh -huh. it, it can turn into a good news story. But what I really, you know, sometimes because like, why we make a mistake, we say sorry. The way we say sorry is we replace the product or we send the gift certificate or, or something like that. We have some very loyal customers who message us and say, hey, you know, I bought this yeah. product today. It wasn't quite right. Um, I yeah. just want you to know about it. So I immediately say, hey, I'm sorry. Can I replace it? Give yeah. you GC? And they don't accept they're saying, hey, no, no, we just are pointing this out for you guys because we really love your product. And that for me is yeah. like, you know, it's like, parang, wow, kilik naman ako. Like, I, I know I screwed up and oh. we're going to fix it, I promise. But like, this guy's not writing just to get something from us. Sometimes because some businesses, they'll say, oh, nag -re lang yan because they want something free. or yeah. You know, yeah, and yeah. sometimes, you know, with the best will in the world, you, your people that work in your stores, these are only humans. Everybody is a human. Uh -huh. You churn out how many pretzels a day or how many, you're not, yet. you know, there's also some things going on in your personal lives or whatever. You're not always going to be perfect. So you will screw up and, you know, you have to be prepared to put your hands up and say, hey, sorry, I, we really made a mistake, but we will fix it and yeah. here's how we're dealing with it. Because if not, you know, I know example, I know I'm dragging on, but I have a friend who's probably one of their, they're watching, but uh -huh. they had a bad experience in a restaurant. Now, the food made mm -hmm. all of everybody sick. Basically, in the in the oh, family, no. No, it's a very oh. rare that occurrence, oh, but it oh. happened. Yeah, so yeah. they reach they reach out to the manager of the you know, by, by email or what, and instead of the manager saying sorry, we will fix it, because also people are scared to accept uh, yeah. the because oh. the, 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 you'll sue or something. They were oh, you can't say that we screwed up because they'll sue us. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, so had but had that manager reacted and said. We're very sorry. We will replace the meal. We will ganyan, ganyan, give assurances. Tapos some boxing, diba? But instead, the manager Amat. said, hey, ganyan, di namin kasalanan. Maybe you guys ate somewhere else and got sick. <laughs> so so that, that friend of ours was so, again, uh, felt bad. Yeah, yeah. Started telling all of us, saying, hey, you know, I, I ate in this place. My whole family got sick. And then all of us now, all of us said, oh, we don't want to eat there. You're going to fly. And then <laughs> oh, the service, diba? But kung, kung naayos mo lang saglitan yun, eh. But then, again, in the scale of businesses, you know, you could have a small business business a big business and these are the things that you will have to interact with and sort out along Amen. the way 
Um, it gets harder the bigger your business is. This is going back to the scalability side of it. You know, I know at some point I won't be able to reply to all the Facebook uh, messages that yeah. we get. Thank God that our complaints are not as <laughs> as high as <laughs> in other places that I can no. still reply. But like if you have a small business, i.e. Uh, hand small, um, the if dapat ganyan yung other things that you start considering from the early eight stages palang. How I'm important I'm is I'm customer relations, you think? Oh because, it, um, but, but, <laughs> because most of the things that you've discussed so mm -hmm. far are about customer relations. And in any business, mm. I think that's the secret sauce, right? Well, at the end of the day, <laughs> if, if you don't have customers, you don't have a business. No? Um, yeah. no matter what it is you're selling, you need a customer. Mm. Um, that's where you get your, yeah. your, your business. So it could be food, it could be a service, you could be selling something, but you have to treat that customer as though they're a real person and they're beneficial. It's a win-win it's a relationship between yeah. the two of you. No? And if you go out in a business now, your sole goal is just to make money, it will never last. You could make money in the beginning, but it won't last. Because eventually your service will catch up with you, your relationship with the customer will catch up with you. Um, because it's not really about profits. For us, because we've always believed that the profits will follow. Okay, you you, you have a you have a good product Nick, and you will follow. Go ahead, yeah. Johnny. No, no, Michael. Um, uh, one of our longtime listeners, see si Abet San Kubit. No, again, shout out to Abet. You know, he's been a very, very loyal listener. Um, he <laughs> says that um, he's a practitioner of the low carb diet. Yo. The auntie ants have uh, low carb pretzels now. So I have to interrupt because you know, see, hey. Abbott has been very, uh, Abbott, very. Uh, Abbott, I feel you. I've been trying to have abs for the longest <laughs> time and I can't get rid of carbs in my life. Um, um, well, uh, <laughs> carbs are good for you. Carbs are good for you if you do sports, no. Um, but we're, we're, in in the states, they had like a whole wheat pretzel that we're looking at here, but it didn't really do so well. But we're looking at healthier yeah. options, naman. But promise, it's not as bad for you as other products. Don't worry. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> but, yeah. But anyway, going back to the the customer yeah. side of it, it's customer is really the relationship between you and the customer is hugely important. Like I said, any business it is, kailan may relationship ka with them, uh -huh. and you treat them like they're a huge part of you, and you don't. Want to disappoint any customer that's the way i look at it is i don't want to go to bed today knowing that we we let down somebody so we immediately mm -hmm. we have a group chat that let's say for us and a camera okay. or something we immediately fix it we get the number of the person we call that person and we say hey we're really sorry um, and i would say about 95 percent of the time it's resolved like that there will be some really yeah. unfortunately may mga talaga unreasonable na, na tao mm -hmm. na kahit anong gawin mo hindi talaga nila maget no? but for us uh -huh. like for any businessman or woman or whatever it is you're starting, I suggest you go into the right mindset. And no matter what goes on, right. because you always remember that your customer is an integral part of your business. Um, exactly. A happy yeah. customer, like Eric said, will go tell everybody that they like your product, you did try it, word uh -huh. of mouth and all this with social media is exponential. An unhappy customer will do the same thing and cause so much damage. So mm -hmm. yun yung, that's the thing. Customer yeah. relations uh -huh. is very important. Eric, Excellent. do you believe yeah. that uh, certain establishments take on the personality of the owner, or or the at least the product takes on a personality that you sort of can relate to? Like when you go to a restaurant for, uh, for one, of course you enjoy the food, but yeah. if the service is really bad, most of the time, you know, there are chances there's a chance that you won't go back anymore. But so, mm -hmm. you know, since we're talking about customer service, is it important for an establishment? To establish a personality so that people can latch on to that particular personality if they like it. Mm. Yeah, well, I guess so. Um, Is there I'm, like a, a, a restaurant that you frequent? Is there like a product that you like because you like the guy who, who sells it to you? Anti ants. Anti ants. Well, um, Actually, I just thought of this um, uh, uh -huh. Tex-Mex uh, restaurant or parang booth sa Green Hills. I don't know if uh -huh. you remember this. Um, Shopsville, sa bandang top floor. Uh, okay. It's right beside uh -huh. where the toy area is. If you don't, if you guys remember, uh -huh. this I know this is where you where you can buy uh, nachos, mga ganun. Um The food is okay, pero yung yung may are. Sobrang sungit talaga niya. Like, ever since. <laughs> ever since. <laughs> hindi nagbago. Like, even the first time I got my, my, myself yeah. here in to Manila, I went to Green Hills kasi syempre, Green Hills, shopping, ganun. And I found myself in that uh, nacho shop. Uh -huh. 
tapos masungit talaga yung may-ari. Uh-huh. So parang ako, okay, so I eat the food. Then, ano, uh, mm-hmm. uh, I go on my day. Ang nakakatawa kasi up until the last time I got there, a few, like a year ago, siya pa rin yung nagbabantay ng, ano, ng cashier. Tapos masungit pa rin siya. And mm-hmm. yun pala, it became the, ano, parang it became the the pull of that restaurant. Mm-hmm. Okay, parang... <laughs> <laughs> Kahit na gano'n yung oh, cashier, yeah, yeah. Like sumikat siya because of that. Like the soup Nazi in Yeah. Oh, uh, oh the, yeah. the soup Nazi. Oh, di ba? The yeah, soup yeah. Nazi. So, uh-huh. parang gano'n, gano'n yung naging, ano, naging uh, pool ng restaurant na yun. Parang, tas, mm-hmm. may meme pa nga yun that was going around it. Na, uh-huh. Have you seen this cashier? Parang ano. Tapos, oh, ito yung si Green Hills. So, I, I forgot yeah. the name of the shop, but I'll probably research on that. But, yun na nakakatawa minsan eh. You also uh-huh. get a following uh, also because of the quirkiest reasons. Well, you know, but, that's brilliant because it's sustainable eh. If he's really masungit in real life, di ba? All he has to do is be himself. <laughs> oh, okay, di ba? Parang doesn't have... You know, uh, you know one of those characters na ano, no matter how negative they are, they, they still seem uh-huh. to be very, you know, interesting. Uh-huh. So I guess it's, mm. he's one of those characters no, na hindi naman siya offensive so. enough for you to not go the, go back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he, he become very amusing uh, uh, to a certain extent. The food extent. is good enough. Eh. So uh, he's uh, coming back. Uh, uh, and parang nagiging right of passage. Ni Oy, sinungitan ako ni cashier. Oy, wow. So, nga, eh. Ako sinungitan din ako. <laughs> parang ganun na yun, John D. Eh. Parang nasuning, parang nandun yung picture. Uh, uh, nandun yung, <laughs> ano, tas nandun yung lo- logo nila. No, on top of that uh, picture. Yeah. Tapos biglang, nasungitan ka naman niya ever. Parang ganun yung caption nun eh. <laughs> <laughs> Galing ah. Oo nga eh. So, okay. But, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Well, actually, I wanted yeah. to, uh, moving on from, syempre, the intangibles. Uh-huh. Well, kasi we were discussing uh-huh. yeah. uh, coming up with a product first, obviously. A good product. Mm-hmm. And then creating a system for it so that you'll be able to sell efficiently. And then, of mm-hmm. course, you want to make money. And uh, for you to be able to make money, you have to, have to create a system so that you're, mm-hmm. there's, there's going to be consistency in, in terms of the mm-hmm. quality of product you're selling. And then, obviously, yeah. we're talking about marketing and sales and, you know, how important it is to have good customer relations so that you can create a relationship with your customers. Now, mm-hmm. this is, the, I think, the most interesting for me, at least, uh-huh. that I want to ask John D. Because John D, <laughs> I, I, I'm assuming that John D is a numbers guy. <laughs> the first question I'd, I'd be thinking is, yeah, yeah. Siyempre, you have to think about profitability of a, of uh-huh. a business, diba? And you have uh-huh. to be good, at least, at the very least, good in arithmetic or good in number uh, with numbers. So when you think mm-hmm. about okay. uh, uh, putting up a business, when you do the math, what's the first thing that you consider in terms of return? And second, how do you compute for your markup? Where do you base your markup on? Like for every piece of pretzel that you sell, how do you compute the, uh, the, the, the how do you compute uh, the markup so uh, that you you'll be profitable enough and you have you can sustain growth. Maglabas yeah. tayong calculator okay. viewers. Tama <laughs> yan. <laughs> Yayaman tayo dito mga pare. <laughs> no no no. Well, yeah. It's that's a, that's a very interesting question yo because you know a lot of people kasi um they they sort of talk themselves out of being an entrepreneur simply because they just focus on the numbers. But then the numbers I agree are very important. Eh. Mm-hmm. The uh, preferred rate of return kasi is largely dependent on scale. Eh. So okay. if um if you're dealing with a multi-billion peso business, of course, diba, um the the rate of return kasi is really dependent on whether or not you want to be able to expand or, or to add a components to your business. Eh? But then if you're talking about ano, if you're talking about starting as an entrepreneur, diba, I think that you have to um uh, like what our friend Edmond Gosso said, you know, you have to go back to your values. And you have to go back to the things which you absolutely need in order for you to provide a good service. Because that's going to provide you the direction, even in terms of regulating the stuff that you're going to be spending on. Like with Mikel, you know, um, it's not only, it's very obvious man, with Mikel that, you know, it's not only just a function of producing a very good press seller. Eh? He needs to allocate, for example, for taking care of his employees, for proper um, uh, employee training. He wants to be able to make them part of the family as well. So the, that ex, that means he extends 
more than normal ex uh, employers extend in terms of certain benefits, etc., etc. Niba. So you have to go back into the things which are absolutely necessary in order for you to run the business, and that is why the honeymoon stage, yung malit pa negosyo mo, where all you have to care about is really the excellence of your product and whether or not you're able to sustain the excellent people who work with it. Those are the most um, uh, those are the formative uh, years of your business. Eh? Mm -hmm. That is where you get a feeling for scale. That's where you get the feeling for what is enough for you. Diba? Kasi okay. nga, ano, enough means different things to many people. Eh? Diba? So yeah. that's when you really, uh, that's when you really ano, look, you do a lot of soul searching at that point. And that's when you have to ask yourself, you know, what do I mean by a successful business? What do I mean by enough? And then you start working back on that, Niba. Right? You want enough in order to provide a good service. You want enough in order to sustain your, your way of life. You need enough in order to sustain the people who rely on you for your living. Everything else other than that kasi is gravy, eh? mm -hmm. right? So um, uh, I'm, I'm sorry if I cannot uh, give specific guidelines as to what constitutes a proper rate of return. But then what I can tell you is really, you know, you have to be very, very definite about, you know, what you're going to rely on in order for you to find yourself in a position to always want to be excellent in your business. So there's no hard rule, Mikael, uh, in, in terms of how you will, um, you know, what price point uh, you will use for a, for a product. <laughs> There, like, there price is. point is different, uh, and Mikel will I mean, explain that. Well, yeah. with, with, with everything, no, let's say you, you have a product. Um, the product is only worth what somebody's willing to pay for it. Correct. Yes. No? Yeah. So I could say, I think my bread cell is, or my hand smaller, or my cake is worth 500 pesos. And then I go outside and say, no, sir, I will Nobody's going to pay that. <laughs> so, so those are the things. The first thing is to identify what your product is. Okay, what are you good at? What it is? What is it that you're yeah. selling? For the for the concept yeah. of this, is we'll just say food, because it's more easy to sell food. You know, yeah. Yeah. But this yeah. could also apply to a service or, or anything else. No? You know how much it costs you to make the cake. Okay? Mm. But obviously, you want to have a profit on that. Um, but then it's, you're also really guided by how much the going rate is for cakes. Mm -hmm. Unless mm -hmm. there's something uniquely special about your cake that you can charge much extra for it or, or what. Uh -huh. So what, what then ends up happening, because normally when you first start making your cakes at home, you just buy all your ingredients from the supermarket. Right. You know? Uh, so you pay the same price everybody else is paying for the ingredients. But if you have a business that's mass producing this already, you have suppliers, the prices for that will yeah. go down. So yeah. once you start operating your own and you say, I want to scale this up, I want to sell these cakes, you then stop going to the supermarket to buy. You look for baking goods supplies, also sort of shabby, yeah. all sorts. My wife just bought, I don't know how many baking things the other day off of Lazada. <laughs> um, um, and then you start looking at that because in as much as you want to say, okay, this cake, I made this in my house, it cost me 100 pesos, I want to make an uh -huh. extra 200 pesos, but if nobody's willing to pay that, okay. so you go, you look at the market rate and then you say, okay, I work my way down. Okay, how can I make yeah. this cake? Um, I sell it at this price, but I make it less. And this is where people, you know, like, that's why people produce things in China now, because it's much mm. cheaper to produce it than you sell it mm -hmm. here and you still mm -hmm. have the margin. It's very easy to do some research online or everywhere to see what are the, the acceptable margins for, let's say, food products, um, services, and certain things, and other stuff. Food products, there's more of a guideline for that. Eh? For services, it's really a bit different. Again, it's what's, what's going around. You could have a very unique service that only you can do. You have a special skill set um, that mm -hmm. only you can deliver, so you can charge whatever you want for that. But if you're selling a cake, the same cake as everybody else is, although your cake must be good, there, there are other cakes that are just as good. You know, that. so you have to be priced at a certain point. You also have to choose mm -hmm. what is your market. Do I want to sell yeah. this to the people who live in itong mahal na village dito, or do I want to sell this in the grocery na mas mura? So those are the uh -huh. things you have to start considering. Now, for any uh -huh. aspiring businessman or woman watching this, ang ayoko lang isipin yun is kailan magaling kayo sa accounting, sa numbers, okay. and all of that. Okay, kasi ako ay sobrang hindi magaling at especially at first, <laughs> no? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I did not study business. The, the one I think we need to clarify, no, is I didn't study business in school. That's another thing I want to stress. So everybody here. 
year. Is, huwag niyo isipin kailangan niyo pumunta sa business school para maging magaling na businessman. Okay? Mm-hmm. Let me be an example for that. I'm an idiot. I mean, I'm not a very good businessman, but we're fairly successful. And I know a lot of other people who studied. Okay. I studied I studied biology for, you know. Um, so I did it. It's, it's not my expertise from school. Accounting, I hate accounting. But there, <laughs> as a business person, there's ways around that. One is you mm-hmm. hire the right people. You hire people yeah. around you. We have uh-huh. brilliant accountants. We have, you know, all sorts of other yeah, people yeah. who are very good at the number crunching, who can give you the reports to help you guide your decisions for the business. Um, so, you know, and like I said earlier, there's all sorts of other services now available. But other things you have to worry about when you're doing business are taxes, expenses, all sorts uh-huh. of stuff. Um, yes. And there's a lot of online resources, again, for that. There's all these services now that can do your taxes for you. Um, you know, like digital and all sorts, you know, may mga apps na for that. But you know, just don't let it be a deterrent. Sometimes kasi people say, ah, di ako marunong sa numbers. Magaling lang talaga ako gumawa ng cake. Yeah. But that's not a deterrent for for, yeah. for me, no? But then, you know, again, dun sa mga costing, food, you know, there's things that you have to consider. Food cost, your head office uh-huh. cost, your electricity cost, everything mm-hmm. inside your house. Diba? If yeah. you're making a cake, that's it's right. not just the cost of the ingredients, it's yeah. the the cost of the lights and everything. And the other thing that people also fa- fail to consider is how much did it, co- you know, you, your service, you are doing it, you're making a cake. You have to pay yourself. Right. You know, mm-hmm. that, that's yeah. the thing. Sometimes, if you, you know, uh, and people go into the business for the, all the wrong reasons. Because well, like I like told you guys uh-huh. kanina, it's magaling ka gumawa cake, let's start making cakes. You end up doing all the work yourself. You don't pay yourself. And you just hours upon hours, nasiraan ka na ng ulo. You don't enjoy what you started out. Uh-huh. Kasi, like, start ka, yeah. bilik ka lang mag-bake, di ba? Yeah, 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 I love baking. Everybody loves my cakes. But if you're baking cakes 20 hours a day, meeting all sorts of unrealistic deadlines, your passion for it will disappear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then no matter what you're charging for those cakes, once your passion or your fire is out, then, mm-hmm. then the money just won't start uh-huh. coming in. But, you know, again, going back to the money side of it, uh, uh-huh. again, m- money is an integral part of any business. Don't get me wrong. Cash is king. But um, if you're doing what you like to do, you believe in what you're doing, you surround yourself with the right people, all of these things will come. Mm-hmm. And also, I, I just wanted to add, because no? I, I, I think that you know, Mikel had it right also when he said that you know, it's very important for you to know your market. Um, uh, earlier, I was on a Zoom call with some uh, uh, lovely young ladies who graduated from a uh, very nice private school here in Alabang. And they're talking to me about uh, they want to set up their own business also. Basically, mm. it's all about um, uh, they want to provide uh, vegetables and fruits to uh, certain villages in the area. Now, one of the things that uh, one of the things that they noticed, you know, is that you know, even without even without me explaining to them um, what they needed to do, they already did a lot of the right stuff. You know, they they were um, they were frequent uh, they frequent um, online shoppers. In these different um, uh, buying groups in Alabang, uh, uh, Yummy Home Kitchen, um, the the Ayala Alabang uh, group for so and so, you know, and so they got a feel for the market, and then oh. they themselves already admitted from the very beginning that you know what they're providing is really nothing special compared to everyone else because everyone else cause is providing specialty and uh, excellent uh, services in terms of uh, vegetables and fruits. Eh. But then one of the things which encouraged them to go on is they said, now, you know, one of the reasons why we want to do this is because we see so many people, they start off by selling strawberries here. And then uh, a month later, we find that the same person is not only just selling strawberries, but this person is also um, selling uh, kamote and cauliflower and kangkong. Parang nag-expanding ka ng product line. Sabi nga nila, you know, I don't think that they're going to be doing this unless that they're actually making money off it. So for them kasi, they seem to also, and that's a nice thing about Filipino entrepreneurs, eh, they seem to get just as much motivation from stories of cutthroat success as from stories of people that they gladly love seeing succeed. You know, and mm-hmm. I think that you know that's a sort of um uh, mindset that we we really have to cultivate if we want to be able to launch an entire generation of Filipino entrepreneurs. Eh? You know, we've been exporting Filipino pa- talent for the for for the longest time already. You know, um, Mikel is actually an example of one of the talents that we exported to uh, another country because it's a good thing nilang na bumalik siya. But then, you know, <laughs> um, I think in order for us to be able to keep the people, the talented people that we keep on sending out, 
we have to be able to encourage them also to see the possibilities in becoming an entrepreneur. And it's not just about making a lot of money. Eh? It's about making a, a, a significant contribution to a culture of excellence that you want to see in the Philippines. So um, I agree with Mikel. You don't have to go to business school in order to become a good businessman. But you do have to be a good person to want to put up a good business in mm. order to contribute to the country. And that's more important, I think, than really just uh, going into something in order to make money. You have to have the right intentions when you, when you go in. No? Um, again, uh -huh. first, first, shout out Patrick Bukobo, the our legend, the number one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, he's going to kill me if I don't give him a shout out. We had a friend, Carla, the PF, everybody. But uh, uh, again, like a lot of these guys who were also commenting here, they, they, the thing with business yeah. ideas is that you also have a network. You know, I mean, I, I'm yeah. not a very sociable guy. I don't really like to go out and stuff. But I do have people that I can talk to for advice. Um, yeah and lean on because you know again starting a business or being in a business is not easy especially now that you know all of us are realizing mm -hmm. this, this covid i think one of the things we wanted to talk about tonight is you know, mm -hmm. as a doing business at this time because uh, one thing to bear in mind when you're doing a business uh, which is very disheartening for a lot of people is there's going to be ups there's going to be downs no Hindi naman yung yeah. start ka ng negosyo, very rare, nasa una pa lang, bilyonaryo ka na, milyonaryo yeah. pa na. Kung yeah, yeah. Min minsan kasi kung papasok ka sa business, tas feeling mo, di ka pa kumita within parang six months to one year, you feel like na it's a failure, uh, ayaw yeah. mo na, and you're, there's a lots of pressure from the other investors to make the money back and all that. No? But there's lots of success stories out there that you know were built on years of failure. Um, it's very rare that you get it mm -hmm. right yeah. right away, and you have to consider that. So, like, example now is um, this thing that nobody naman could have predicted what happened to us now. Na two months sarado, um, almost yeah. everybody um, is is in hardship. And you, if you're gonna be in business, you have to have, you know, like the backbone to be able to 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 ride this out and figure it out. Because at the end of the day, mga tao mo din, they look to you for guidance, yeah. look for leadership. If you're if you're floundering, if you're complaining and failing and saying there's no way out of it, then everybody will be the same. No? But you know, as a business, there's going to be ups, there's going to be downs, and it's how you navigate those. And you have to have character and network, mm -hmm. um, money, you have to be, you know, be able to get money where you need it and make things go around. Cash flow is one of the things that you need to talk about. Now you have to make it go around. But we all learned a whole lot now during COVID. I learned so many things during this time yeah. about businesses. Na, oh. akala mo, alam mo na yung mga kailangan mong alamin. But no. Um, yeah. we, and these are the things. And then, but the other flip side of it is now with the COVID, you've seen so many new ideas come up. So many different yeah. people selling everything. I, like John mentioned, these, yeah. these girls who want to start this um, vegetable business. There's so many things. My Viper groups, they're so full of all sorts of things being sold to you now. People are finding ways. And this is you know, because in your entrepreneurial spirit ng Pinoy. Um, yeah. In ad other countries, a lot of them will just sit back and say, ooh, there's nothing we can do. COVID, let's just wait mm -hmm. for the government to give us some money. Here, my gosh, mm -hmm. people went out there and figured out, hey, we need to make money somehow because nobody's going to feed yeah. us. Uh, you know, well, 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 and even businesses have had to adapt. We had to adapt on almost everybody else. Because if you don't make it, we'll lose it all. And that's also in the mm -hmm. Philippines, yung isa natin, we, we have to consider is a lot of people here live week to week, hand to mouth. Um, the need to have something is, is more important. Parang the impetus to start or to have a successful yeah. business. If there's a fire in your butt that's talagang pag di mo ginawa ito, matino, wala kang kakainin. Whereas in other uh -huh. countries, oh, there's a fail safe, you know? Uh -huh. um, so there, I think that's why the, the Pinoy entrepreneurial spirit is much, much stronger than in more areas. Talagang maabilidad yung mga paggawa pa lang ng meme, di ba? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah. I appreciate the point though that uh, you know this is really more about uh, your attitude towards uh, putting up a business than it is about money because at the end of the day uh, this is really about uh, the overall impact on your life not only the mm -hmm. how much money you're going to earn because you can earn as much money as uh, the next tycoon but if you're not happy with what you're doing and you're not doing it the right way then mm -hmm. there's no point of doing it at all, so that's why uh, it, it raises this you know, question to Eric. Um, mm -hmm. Eric, uh, one of the main reasons you why you get into business and something that you can't avoid when you're putting up a business is uh, dealing with people. Um, mm -hmm. 
you have a staff, obviously. Mm -hmm. You like Mikel and John D, who are, uh, you know, who manage their own businesses. They have to think about their staff. They have to think about the people that work for them, uh, especially now in this crisis. But obviously, there is a there's also it's very important as well to pick the right people to work for you. How do oh. you choose the people who will work for you, and how do you vet them? How do you know? How do you know that this is the right guy to to hire mm -hmm. in your business? Uh -huh. um, well, mm -hmm. early on in my management career, I used to uh, focus on credentials like San Grumadweet, maganon. Pero <laughs> as uh -huh. as I move forward yeah, yeah. Uh, in my career, I figured that that's not the case. Eh. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I look for attitude. I really look for attitude and I look for drive. And I ask also, uh, one of the main questions I ask during interviews is, uh, uh, what are your plans for your personal life? Do you, I know, parang, do you wanna, are, are you, are you, do you see yourself in the corporate business mm -hmm. or in this company for the next five years? And I tell them, it's okay if it's not, uh, it's okay you can tell me if this is just a stepping stone for your for your grand career or something like that, or, or, or your mm -hmm. grand plan. Some people actually say, you know, I, I actually want to put up my own business uh, and, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. No? And I respect that. So I look for the drive. I look for attitude. Um, mm -hmm. Because I can always say, I, know, I can always say, okay, so for example, oh, uh, this person wants to put up his own restaurant. Sabi natin. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So in, 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 in a restaurant, there are, there are systems that you need to uh, put in place. You can actually learn the systems here and stuff like that. So if you, if you, if you work with me, for me or with me, I can actually help you develop that skill so that you can apply that to your future. So that's mm -hmm. what I look for, really. Um, attrition, yeah. kasi, uh, losing people also is natural. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. figured, I, I, I also actually figured that out as well. When people tell me na, sir, uh, uh, I'd like to resign because as long as it's a good reason, like it's growth mm -hmm. for that person, I let them, yeah, I congratulate yeah. them, and I wish them luck. Pero pag lateral lang, tapos hindi maganda yung lalipatan mm -hmm. niya because of circumstantial, or maybe uh -huh. it's just an itch that they want to scratch, mga ganun, <laughs> yeah. I, I advise them na, mukhang mali itong ano mo, mm -hmm. decision mo yeah. to leave. Give, yeah, give me yeah. a couple more years, then I'll help you develop into a better person. Something to mm -hmm. that point. Mm -hmm. so, John, yeah, have you... so, going back to the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Go, yeah go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish the... Go, finish go, 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 go. Go. No, no. Actually, I was just going to say, now, going back to the to the original question, that's what I look for in people. It's really the attitude, their drive, okay. and what yeah. they plan to do out of out of this... Join, like, uh, by joining me or this uh, the company that mm -hmm. know, he's applying for. So... Ano ba yung gusto mo yeah. makuha out of this? Yun ang uh -huh. gusto ko nga. So, you, you think, Johnny, especially if you're, yeah. if you're putting up a small business, uh, obviously, <laughs> you're going to look for people that you trust, uh, people mm -hmm. that were referred to you, because you're going to mm -hmm. start with a very small team. So, obviously, the trust yes. issue is very important. You can't just have mm -hmm. a, uh, just anybody come in and who uh -huh. might... Because chemistry is a very important thing don't you, uh, oh, yeah, for, definitely. for a team. So yeah. for a small team, if you want to grow that uh, team to uh, looking forward to a bigger business or a bigger platform, you're, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna want a very strong core. And mm -hmm. in your in your experience as uh, as a manager of a, a business and a John D as a president mm -hmm. of your business, um, what were your mistakes in the past that led you to making better decisions in choosing the right people or in choosing? You know, make um, setting the direction for the company that you've. Ah uh, uh, yes, you know. Run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's a very good question. One of the one of the lessons that I wish that I learned earlier was uh, I was blinded at one point by competence. You know, simply mm -hmm. because a person was competent, you know, I would uh, put up with certain behaviors which are counterproductive mm -hmm. to building a very good team. Yeah. yeah. Diba? Um, you know, business is not a, it's, it's not like the last dance where you have Michael Jordan, you have a supporting cast to assemble <laughs> around them, you know. I mean, yeah. that's a once in a lifetime thing, eh? Diba? And, uh, number one, yeah, I was blinded by competence. Number two, you know, um, there were times early on in my business career 
when you know um, to a certain extent you know i resented people who wanted to leave the business because you know they had bigger dreams they have greater dreams you know now what i found out and it's a good way also to build your staff you know it's it's great to be part of someone's success story you know it's great oh. to have that feeling that in your business in your staff niba, there's a sense of upward mobility that you can aspire for more and if the business isn't big enough anymore to contain your ambition your passion and your drive niba, the business that lets you go that's the sort of business that you want to stay in also mm. so you know mm. um that's that's a, one of the things that i learned also not to resent people <laughs> who leave me you know it's nothing personal eh? you know sometimes they just have another dream that they have to pursue um the third thing that i that i wish that i learned uh, earlier was you know creating um uh, creating a very good feedback loop because you know sometimes the tendency also for me i come from a teaching background diba right? um for people who grew up in our generation kasi you know we used to idolize teachers who were excellent lecturers eh? right. those people who can keep you spellbound in an auditorium of 150 people and who can talk all day but then now you know the world is so complicated and business and the delivery of excellent services is now so complicated in itself that you know you really don't have time to be a lecturer in your business so you have to be more collaborative eh? so um uh, one of the one of my mistakes early on was that i did not build in too many avenues for communication and for feedback loop eh? basically my idea of leading was you know giving one inspirational speech a day and having everyone else take <laughs> notes around me which doesn't work Diba? because you 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 build yourself up as a sole authority figure and then you don't encourage people to you know, to to think differently from you or to act differently from you you're basically cloning yourself in the worst way possible mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because you only present one side of ano, what makes you an effective manager and an effective uh, business owner so you know I, I, that's why I really love hearing stories from Mikel about you know how he's always so very inclusive with his business. He takes time to listen oh. to them. He creates opportunities for them to interact with him in a very meaningful way. Because you know those are the stupid mistakes I made early on in in my uh, business career. And uh, please, wag <laughs> akong tularan. <laughs> well, speaking of making, speaking. Shout, out, shout out lang to my team yeah, no? yeah. They're, they're watching oh, yeah, now yeah. Oh, cool. so, oh. if, they don't, if they don't watch walang sweldo so uh, shout out to my team <laughs> uh, yeah, please, please name them, yeah. oh. thank you so much for you know just quickly uh, sorry Ron I know you're gonna ask but the, it's just the topic of people is something that means a lot to me um, yeah, more, I, I'm probably it's, yeah. I'm probably a little better than at that than actually running a business because uh, you know <laughs> for me pe- the people side of it is more important and so what like eric said when it comes to the interviews um like me i really i'm not fussed about where you came from what uh, college background you have in fact i very rarely look at that in the resume you know um the way that we do it in anti is so the, there's minimum qualifications for the job as such and then they go through hr where they do the normal interview but um there's always an uh, um, an interview with me in the end um and the interview with me in the end actually it it rubs people off sometimes the wrong way or they're a little bit put off by it because it's not your usual process where by the time they get to my office they've already been spoken to by i don't know how many people taking a test and what mm-hmm. and it, I, the minute they sit down i say hey don't worry about it sometimes yeah. it's in- intimidating i don't yeah. look pinoy and then i they don't know whether to talk to me in tagalog <laughs> or not then i start off with tagalog okay na but anyway so what i what, what i say okay. like i say you know this interview is not you telling me how awesome yeah. you are now i just want to know yeah. who you are and whether you'll fit yeah. in our organization and also for what you will expect if you work here uh um, yeah. so it's just really a getting to know relaxed type of thing because if somebody's so uptight and they're just uh, you don't, won't really get the best you know there's everybody's research the usual interview questions na. so naka prepare na yung mga sagot nila dyan, eh. but the way <laughs> we talk to them or yeah. i talk to them is completely different now it's like parang just shooting the breeze already um and it's just really me really getting a feel of that person saying okay i think this yeah. guy or per- lady can fit into the team um and then we, we we take it from there but i also explain to them that you know if you're looking for an organization where your boss holds your hand tells you everything you need to do and shouts at you or whatever it is then this is not the place for you um because we're very relaxed here the reason we're hiring you is we need we think you're brilliant and i want you to use your brilliant brain to make our business even better um, and also we need you to be able to talk to the rest of the team 
in a nice way. And also, we, we explained that the culture here in Aspar, sa Antiens, is walang sigawan dito, walang fear, walang mm-hmm. anything. Yeah. If that's the type of management style you have, then it won't work here, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. We're really, you know, we're fairly nice here. Sometimes, because people don't like that approach, now you're too nice, you know. It, it, it puts them on, oh, I can't work here. Yeah. But anyway, so so that, that, that side of it's very important for us because you have to get the right people in any business you're starting. Uh, the other question, because you have to ask yourself, is your business partner? Kasi very rare ka, mag-isa ka lang sa business, di ba? Yeah. Kailangan yung pipiliin mong partner, somebody that you can work with. Sometimes, you know, yeah. how many how many stories have you heard na best friend na they hate each other now because they did a business that it didn't go that, well, uh, di ba? That, And not, not just mm-hmm. uh, friends, it could be family now. You know? Family, yeah. Uh, I, the, the business I run is a family business and, you know, it's my cousins, my tita, my dad. There's all sorts of people that you have to appease throughout the process and it's not always... Um, you know, there's certain people have different ideas and if you have mm-hmm. a friend or something, I always yeah. say to people, you know, don't ruin your relationship by starting a business together. Um, <laughs> but sometimes, yeah, diba, husband and wife, diba, mag-start sila ng business po siya, papatay yeah. rin afterwards, diba? So, again, it's go, going back to the people, if you're going to do business, you have to be surrounded by the right people that you know that whether, you know, you have a clear understanding between the two of you or the three of you or whatever. It's the beginning pa lang. Uh, sometimes what's scary is, you know, this business is not that there's so many partners. You know, they start mm. something, like oh. whether it's a gym or something, it's like you look at the, the sheet. Because uh-huh. I've been asked, you know, like, Mikael, do you want to, I don't have money, but sometimes they say, oh, Mikael, do you want to invest in this uh, venture? Then you see, which are And like, you know, these are lots of personalities you're going to have to to juggle. And, and you know, plus, there'll be some that are more patient. There'll be some that want their money back right away. There'll be some that don't like you to treat the employees well. There'll be some that want you to pay the right taxes and others that don't, diba? Well, you know, so you have oh, to... Oh, yes, the taxes. You have to you have to consider you have to have the people with the right value set as you. Now I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed that the, the family that we have they have the same thing. They want to hire more people and reinvest in the company, take care of people. We don't don't get me wrong. You can ask our staff. We don't pay the ginormous salaries that other people pay, but the culture there is we will take care of you no matter what happens. No, I, I, ideally. But if you have an investor or another has the different expectations, pag nakita nila yung finance, mo say, oh, why are you getting insurance for everybody? That's money that we could have saved. Yeah. You know, like there will be times na like that you have to consider. Mm-hmm. So Mikhail, those are, you know, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, one thing I'm interested in, of course, is uh, obviously based on your story, your I know your accounts and um, your stories about um, um, Auntie Anne's and when you started out and when you took over Auntie Anne's, like what, five years ago? Uh, ten years ago? No, uh, 2011 or 12, around about that time. So around almost 10 years, right? Yeah. So so people might be wondering, how has how, how has it been for Auntie Anne since you took over? Because you seem to have really good business practices and this did this work for you? Did yeah. it really, you know? Did okay. it improve the performance um, of Auntie Anne's? We, we the pressels really improved. I love the pressels of Auntie Anne's. But, but, you know, let, just, we touched upon this before, but like when we took over the business, it wasn't really in a good way. Because um, sometimes people think now you're given tons of money and you come from a rich family. Nobody's expecting anything. It's different. Well, the way we, we took it over, we had no money to invest in it. It was a set up or do with the circumstances. Anyway, we took over the brand. We committed to open a certain number, like I said earlier. Mm-hmm. But the main mm-hmm. gist of it for me, um, because now I believe so much in people, is we wanted to um, hire the right people first make sure we train them the right way. So the first one, um, two years, we just invested heavily in training mm. and getting the systems right. And like I said earlier, we had no point to inventing the wheel. We got the guys from Antia Hans in the U.S. They had a Filipino counterpart here. Okay. I said, yay, man, walk me around. Teach us. Just teach us. Tell us how we're supposed to be doing things. We're very open. Yeah. We're receptive. And then we didn't do any marketing. You know, Eric talked about the importance of marketing earlier, which it is. But uh-huh. for the first year or so, I didn't want to do any marketing because you know, I don't want to say, come to Antians. We're not yet ready. You know, we were rebuilding uh-huh. and yeah. stuff. And But, the, you know, the, the most important part of this thing is, I think, is surrounding yourself with the, the right people. Uh-huh. Um, and I was very blessed. We hired the right guys. We, we trained them. Um, I spend a lot of time with my direct team in terms of just, you know, getting to know them and developing them and really empowering them. It's I know the word empowering is so cheesy, you know, but it's really, the, and I have very selfish reasons for doing this. It's because I'm inherently lazy, okay? I, 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 I want to play football with you guys almost all of the time. 
Okay, so <laughs> if I have to worry about business all of the time, then you know, it's, it's so we train people, we, we we trust them, we build a relationship with them. I have my right hand man, the operations head Rod. He's been with us. He actually left the company before I started because it was Medjo Mogulo and we asked him to come back and we you know we made him promises and he's been there since day one. He's been promoted. He's buying his first house this year and those are the kinds wow. of wow. stories that for us, you know, like it, it's huge for me because we've helped, you know, I made a promise to these guys saying, if you stick with us, this is what's going to happen. Because when we first took this over, we were telling these guys, you know, we're new owners, we're going to build this Ganyan Ganyan amount of stores, like, eh, we're gonna have yan, whatever. And now look at where we are. You know, we went from 14 to 60 stores and employing now 400 guys. But there's so many challenges along the way. We made mistakes, we made, you know, there's learning things, whether it's with, with people, but. Um, what 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 stayed the same is that we we were always there. I was there. The same values we had never changed. Is that the, mm -hmm. we built this business around the people and everything else will take care of itself. Mm -hmm. and, I remember you. Know, if my guys are watching now, and I hope they can they can vouch for this because I I don't know. Man, I guess I'm like a comment. Did you did you check out my comment? Eh, who's the only hype man? Okay, sorry. We need to delete that one again. Salvation. But you know, we uh, really really yeah, believe yeah. in like what Eric said earlier. You know, like if they're leaving, we, I I told you this before. As you know, somebody says to me they're leaving. I never hold them back. I say, where are you going? What, what oh. is it then? If I know like it's a dodgy move or is it, I just say, hey, you know, it's up to you. But we have many instances where people left and have come back um, oh. to, to, to work mm -hmm. with us. And we all, you know, some companies can say they have a rule. Pag umalis ka, bahala ka na sa buhay mo. Hindi ka natatanggap. When I worked in London, that was the, what the boss told us from the get-go. Uh -huh. um, yeah. But for me, like if somebody left, you know, to, to venture out and they, you know, we, we take them back. Shout out to Apple, one of our area managers now. She left and she's mm -hmm. back again doing a wonderful job and a few others. Uh -huh. But the advantage also nice is if, if they go and leave, they also learn stuff from the other place that they were in. Mm -hmm. you know, And then they mm -hmm. come back and they can help you with that as well. Um, and, and, and that has been the case. But you know, don't close your door. Don't have such a rigid set of rules that can't be bent. You know, sometimes yeah. when you limit limit people with too many rules and say, this is how it's always been done, this is how it will always be, um, mm -hmm. this is what the book says, then uh, you, you'll have a mm -hmm. hard time. But we, we are so, the reason Auntie Anne's became successful here in the Philippines without a shadow of a doubt is because of the brilliance of our people. Um, it's not me. I, 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 I inspire them, maybe. I'm the guiding force. But, you know, the, you touched the one, you said cream cheese sticks. That's the idea of one of the employees that works with us. That's not me. I wasn't oh. sitting in my room and saying, how am I doing? But the reason we were able to try that is because they felt comfortable enough to say, hey, uh, Sir Mikael, feeling now, it's like this, this, this. And we try it every month. We, as the most beautiful part of my job is we try all sorts of different ideas from the team. I say, I know feeling it's like They make it, we eat it, and we, you know, 95% of the time, it's like that's all their ideas, all the successful products you see now in our store. It was the idea of those people. They're the geniuses behind it. I'm just, uh, the, I'm just the guy who says, sarap nito, ah. and then we sell it. Right? Mikael, that's, that, uh, that's a good thing. I know that's a good uh, thing that you shared with us. Yeah. No? But uh, one question I have, though. Um, have you ever gotten, gotten mad at anybody uh, for, uh, okay. from, from your staff? You, you, it, on the football field, yes, you've seen me get mad one or two times, especially if one of my friends has been tackled badly or there's a jerk there. Yeah. But yeah. in an, in yeah. in our office yeah. in Auntie Anne's, I can you can again you can go talk to my team. I have I do not recall any time I raised my voice or got mad. Yeah. There has been one or two times where I said, "Oh, I'm a bit disappointed that that happened." Um, uh, more, let's say, sometimes there's like an incidence of like a, a trust issue, like a, a theft or whatnot. Because we always say mm -hmm. to everybody there, now, whether you steal one peso or one million from us, it's the same thing. It's a it's a breach of trust, oh. you no? Know? So, uh, and th there are times, I say, where we really invest heavily into our. Let's say there's a certain manager we really really like. We we developed him, and then we found out down the line that he started stealing or whatever it is. It's very mm -hmm. rare. Those are times that it it more breaks my heart than angers me. Uh, and more often than not, when this happens, they always ask for an audience with me, not to ask for their job back, but just to say really sorry that they let us down. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I'll talk to them most of the time, but generally one of those things. But I've never, like, gotten mad at anybody in the office or raised my voice. And, again, mm -hmm. Rod, my operations guy, my right-hand man, the guy I've been lost without, his, I hope he's watching this now. He he always tells the story because well, before I started down, he was masungit. You know, he was like a masungit type of manager. Uh -huh. And then, you know, I started taking him under my wing. And he said, you know, how can I be masungit if this guy is like this? 
uh, you know, this is the culture. So he had to change his thing. And even he That's doesn't cool. shout or get mad, you know, because we, we say to our managers, you don't have to shout mm -hmm. to get your point across. You Actually, yeah, that's the reason. That's the reason why I'm back. asking you, Mikael, because I uh, know yeah. um, there are still uh, people who, who uses the old management style of instilling fear at uh, the it, staff, right? I mean, there's very different schools of thought on it. Some people believe in it, mm -hmm. the authoritarian rule, the older school guys, they feel, you know, and, and it's not for me to say what one is better than the other. It's just for me, what's worked for me throughout my career is treating people um, with, with, you know, treating them well, looking after them, developing them, making them feel like they're part of something bigger, um, which is mm -hmm. a huge thing. But, you know, like, it, we nothing makes me happier than to see one of our guys be successful. Let's say like, if a guy's able to buy a house from working with us, oh my gosh, that's a story that we, sh we shout out to the, the rooftops. And every year in our Christmas parties, we celebrate the guys who've been with us long, like, you know, loyalty, pro, you know, this guy's been yeah. with us five years, 10 years or something. There's always awards in our, our Christmas parties and all sorts of stuff. But, you know, like to be able to develop somebody and grow them in your company, for me, it's a greater, yeah. you know, my other shareholders might say, this guy, we can't, we're losing money because he's too nice to the employees. I hope not. Shout out to, <laughs> shout out to, to the family. Shout out um, to shareholders. Uh, but, you know, it's just that really, I, I, I think that, you know, we, you don't have to, sh you don't have to be scared because the, the, my, my philosophy has always been, if they're scared of you, they're only scared of you when you're there. Okay, the minute you turn your back or do something, they're not going to be doing their job because they care for the company. Right. Yeah. Um, but if if they know that you're nice, you you know you have to have some level of respect. But respect, yeah, you have to earn that. Right? You don't just okay. go in there and say, "I'm the son of the owner." Now you listen to me. This is what you're supposed to do. But you have to earn that. You have to know what they do. Be open to their ideas. Yeah. John D said about being able to take you know ideas from your, your peers and the people who work there. Um, because yeah, if you, if you don't do that, I I really don't think you know the thing is. You know, there's lots of successful billionaires out there, and unfortunately, a lot of them treat their employees badly. Um, that's just the the nature of it. They do all sorts of PR or whatever it is, but in the nitty gritty, when you go and speak to their teams, they'll tell you how it is. Um, the hope is that you go to Auntie Anne's and you talk to our guys, and they say, "Yeah, we got my passion as well, the detail, but you know, we we care." Like example, if something happens to any of our guys, um, let's say today there was a motorcycle accident, unfortunate for one. That just our whole day was just focused towards this guy. You know, making sure he was mm -hmm. fine. He was, he was, you know, man. He was going to one of our stores to open it today, and he got hit by a car. And that just like I got that news in the morning and threw me off the whole day, because I said, Jesus, oh. you know, I want to man this guy. How do we help and and and, and all of that? But I, I just I'm very cheesy in that in that way. Is that I really believe that these are the guys that will help build any company. And you see it during COVID. You guys will see it. I told you before now. When your business is down here, really having difficulties, yeah. if the people rise up to help you, then you know you're doing something right. Right. If oh, the attitude is bala sa boy mo, then <laughs> yeah, alam mo na. It says a lot. I want to bring up yeah. a, a, a little anecdote I heard like a long time uh -huh. ago about uh, the difference between a Chinese businessman and a Filipino businessman. A Filipino businessman buys. <laughs> racist, you know, racist. No, no, no. I'm just saying that uh, there's <laughs> no, no, a story no. about how different. Um, you know, these two characters uh, do their business. Like the Filipino businessman, according to this story, he earns a little, buys a car, then buys a, you know, buys a, a house perhaps. or And then every every time he earns something from his business, he would actually take that money that he earned and buy property or buy something uh, tangible, like a car. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Chinese businessman, once he earns money, the other guy, what he does is he puts it back to the he he puts the the money back in the business. He doesn't have a car, but you know all the money that he earns he puts back in the business. Later on, the Filipino businessman, uh, you know, his business goes down, and he ends up selling the car, the house, oh. and who does he sell it to? The Chinese businessman for a much lower price. So. I don't know. From that story alone, it says a lot about you know how some Filipinos run their business, and how like a certain you know our Filipino Chinese brothers as well, and how they look at a business and how uh, you know it's important for them to invest in their business. The reason why I'm, I'm I'm bringing this up, this little anecdote, is how important is cash flow? How important is you making sure that your money works for you, and making sure to have the discipline to not spend it on useless things and actually come back and actually build that business with the money that you're earning. Eric, let me start with you. 
<laughs> well, um, mahirap kasi sa Pinoy, mayabang ang Pinoy eh. <laughs> diba? So, mahilig Luhu mo na, di ba? Luhu mo na. Diba? Luhu mo na. Luhu mo na. Luhu mo na. Luhu mo na. Yabang eh. Yeah, yeah. But, um, that's really something, I guess, uh, not just Filipino businessmen or aspiring businessmen have to con- uh, really consider is that um, they, they really have to look at what they really need and what, I don't know, Uh, what they want and have that distinction. Yung mga wants kasi, these are mostly unnecessary things or not really essential things, diba? So I think uh, focus on, number one, when you start a business, focus on the business lang muna. I think that's very important. The reasons behind you you started that business. Now, Hindi kasi ang pinag kasi also, pag, pag kumita ng konti, iniisip ka agad, anong bibiling ko sa pera? Di ba? Correct. Ganun oh, ka. Kasi, The thing is also, and it's this is worldwide. No, nine out of ten businesses do not go through the first year of operations. First one or two years, nagfail na siya. Nine out of ten, and that's uh, that's true. Mm-hmm. Tapos yung one, yung ten percent na yan, uh, tumatagal lang yan na mga five ten years mostly. No, mm-hmm. bihiram bihira na maraming tumatagal sa mga ne, uh, but ibang negosyo. So there is uh, a time to get in a business. There's also a time to get out of a business. Um, and people, when, pag, for example, if you put up a business, pag konting konti, parang pag nakumita ka na, uh, I think it's better really to save it na lang muna or balik mo sa negosyo mo para lumaki yung negosyo. And tama yung sinabi ni, ni Miguel, eh, cash is king talaga. Hindi utang. <laughs> Kasi ang problema rin kasi sa Filipinos or most people na parang pag may opportunity to get it on installment na pwedeng, oy, mm-hmm. pwede pa pala itong iutang sa banko, gagawin nila para makapag-flex ka agad. Yeah. Diba? Gagamitin nila yung credit card nila para makapag-flex agad. Oh, may bago ang kotse, may bago ang TV, ganun and stuff like that. Which is not necessarily uh, kailangan mo, di ba? Now, it does feed your ego, yes. A lot of uh, stuff, like brand new stuff, would feed your ego. But it won't feed your family. It won't mm-hmm. feed your future family as well, no? Like your, your kids' kids. So if you really want to to make your business big, you always have to think na, or instill mo sa, sa mindset mo na cash is king. Talaga. Mm-hmm. Well, probably John? now. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, it's just now no, more no, than ever. Go ahead, Miguel. Yeah. Now more than ever, we realize that cash is king. They always tell you this mm-hmm. before, oh, yeah. cash is king, cash is king. Yeah. But you know, now that COVID hit, parang, wow, it really realigns your priorities. No? Uh, yeah, you know, a lot of, uh, even a lot of my friends, I know me personally, before you'd buy shoes or whatever it is, you had to have all <laughs> of these things. And then now this happened where you're sitting in your house for two months in your pambaha, you realize, hey, I don't actually need these shoes. What the heck, diba? But it's the same <laughs> with, with cash. It's never been a more frightening time to be in business because you know, you're all of a sudden hit with two months of no revenue, but you still have all these oh. bills to pay. And if you yeah. if you haven't been prudent and had the right cash reserves, you'd be in a load of trouble. Um, we've been very fortunate in that sense. Now you know we're not really into buying all these expensive and issuing dividends or whatever. And like I said, the shareholders are very compassionate towards the people also. So we take care of the people first. No, but cash flow is so important. There will be times in your business where you'll be down to your last whatever a few pesos, and it's how you make that money go around. Um, and again, this is where you surround yourself with people who are very good with making money go around. There are some people within your team that one peso mo kaya nilang pabutin yan ng sobrang layo. No? And again, yeah. relationships also because if you have a good relationship with a supplier, um, you can buy yourself more time. Um, if you have a good relationship with your landlord and all sorts of stuff. You know, if they believe in your business, they're willing to lend you. Um, sometimes the, the, you know, debt is not always a bad thing. Uh, in business, you're going to mm-hmm. need to have a certain amount of debt, especially if you're, expa- if you're expanding, but it's being responsible with that debt. Mm-hmm. Um, and after COVID, we don't know what kind of, you know, we asked the other day, si Sek Gary, diba, is how, how are the banks going to be in terms of financing after this? Diba? And we're all a bit, ooh, we're scared. We're, for, we're very fortunate in Antians that currently we don't have any, but at some point, you really have to look at that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And, you know, Just to touch quickly on what Eric said about you know the wants and stuff, just a quick story. My my young son, I have a son who's eight years old, but a few years when he was younger, he lectured me 
um, because he learned in school about needs and wants. Okay, uh, and I remember I took I was in the mall with him. We were walking around and I picked up these shoes. That's how I, because I, the only thing I ever buy for myself are shoes, like very rare, but I'll buy shoes. No, then he said that. Is that a need or a want? I was like, oh my god! I stopped in my tracks. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh my god! This five-year-old is making more sense than I've ever made in my life. Um, so I, I quickly put the shoes down and lectured him. Yeah. And then one, once he wasn't looking, I bought the shoes. But um, yeah, yeah, it's, it, it, it's, the, it's the same as a business. You will have needs and you yeah. will have wants. And the yeah. yung advice ko lang then to mga Pinoy entrepreneurs is don't fall into the trap na kailan you look really rich. Okay. Mm. Oh, uh, yeah. Diba? Kasi sometimes, you know, even I was taught that before, and I've fallen into this trap before. Like, oh, your watch has to be so nice because if the person you're meeting sees that you're wearing a crappy watch, they won't take you seriously. And I was like, oh, yeah, fair enough. Then I had to buy myself a nice watch. And, you know, parang for me, it's just you make yourself broke trying to look rich. No, and that negates yeah, the yeah. thing. If your business model is strong enough, your business and you as a person are good enough, it shouldn't matter what watch you're wearing. You see all these stories about Mark Zuckerberg, all of them just wearing the same shirt or whatever. There's there's much to be said about simplicity and humility. Don't get me wrong, I like nice things too. I do. But just uh -huh. I, I see cause a lot of aspiring businessmen or salesmen that they feel like they have to deck themselves out now. Sobra wow to the nines, the right? And sometimes it, it will actually work against you. Because if things like this guy is more into buying himself nice things, what I can't trust yeah. him with my money. Diba? Oh, yung mga, gano, ayaw mo yeah, maging business yeah. partner yung bilin na bilin ng bagong auto, relo, or, or, right. or, or madaming girlfriend. Uh, yung mga, <laughs> ah, yun. <laughs> All right. Well, Mikael, uh, maybe we could, you know, we could uh, one have one last round. Let's we'll start with John D. Uh, mm -hmm. How important it is to have discipline in handling money in, when you run a business? Uh, and, and your the last, uh, you know, pearl of wisdom that you can impart to our viewers well you know it's not really just about an uh, uh discipline in handling the business but it's really more about discipline handling yourself you know i've uh, i've opened and closed uh, more businesses uh in 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 in, uh, in the past decade uh that i've been uh, been living than I, I thought would have been possible but then you know one of the things which really sustained me was in the fact that you know i always believe that more important than really the amount of money that I generate is really about the value you generate in the business. Um, I agree with what Mikel said that you know um, uh, you don't necessarily have to look like a million uh, pesos in order for you to be able to, to generate more business. But then you know it's all about the way in which you value yourself and the way you value the time of other people. There have been times when I was uh, when uh, I I could not pay my utilities. I have been uh, all I have been. Uh, my utilities have been cut uh, more times than I'm uh, comfortable discussing. Um, I remember before my before my first business um, uh, actually took off, I had exactly 20 pesos in my wallet. I had to go to Shangri-La in Makati in order to meet with someone very important who could give me a very nice contract. I only had 20 pesos. And when I got <laughs> to the meeting, you know, um, he didn't even say yes. So when I took the MRT back to where I was living in Pasig, and I realized I only had 20 pesos, I only had enough for the MRT and for me to walk home from uh, Shangri-La in, uh, in, in Shaw to my house. It was only when I got home and I was sweaty and I was tired when I realized this person had been calling me for the longest time pala. Because my <laughs> phone, since I was taking the MRT, you know, I, I hid it here in my, in my jeans, in my front pocket, into silent. And it was only then when I received my first big contract. And um, I don't think it's because of anything that I did, but it's possibly, uh, I think, because of the way in which I valued the other person's time and the way that I valued myself and the people who worked for me. Um, I think those are the important things. And that's why, you know, I always end by saying that, you know, the virus is out there, but then hope is in here. Hope is within us. The <laughs> fact that we can draw upon one another as a wellspring of strength is actually the best business model that you can implement. Mm -hmm. So that's, right. uh, that's just basically it. Well said, John D. Mikael? Firstly, John D., you're my idol. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, but uh, like, you know, Painful this, memory, Chen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's the thing. Most successful business and b businessmen would have gone through an experience like that. Don't believe somebody when they said success just came like that. 
Um, and sometimes when things are handed to you, those are the things that go wrong. You know, it's the most successful, the, the most meaningful things are the things that you built and that you went through yeah. so much hardships for. Means oh. right? mm-hmm. because the hard is people want the quick buck. You know, that's why people invest in pyramid schemes and all sorts of stuff. It's Ay, the quick yeah. buck. Diba? Um, and it doesn't happen. Like people will look at Auntie Ants now and say, "Wow, at least you have six, you know, it, it was hard to get to here. Um, nobody gave us anything. We had to really, really, you know, it's not like SM all of a sudden say, oh, "Wow, Auntie Ants, here you go, fifty. We had to work our way. We had to prove our worth to these people. Um, and yeah. and the same with our employees. So you know, so just keep 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 at it if you believe in what you're doing. Obviously, um, there's there will come a time where you have to decide. I have to try something else. But you know, mm-hmm. if you fail at first, don't worry about it. You know, these are these are things that happen. I have had you know many challenges in my life. Sometimes people look at me and say, "I'm some rich kid from somewhere." No, we, this is not how we were raised. I, I don't have a lot of money, and even till today, um, I don't have it. I have a mortgage like everybody else. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, you know, I have bills to pay. I have things to worry about even during COVID. But what gives me the most fulfillment is that we have a business that means a lot to other people like our customers like the product we have employees that we really really value and for me that's more important than anything uh, you know I, I know it's hard to believe in but in this day and age sometimes you know you don't have to be driven by money um, uh-huh. money is hugely important don't get me wrong it's hugely important it's you cannot go with your smile and pay that to Meralco but I'm happy so you still have to make money you have to pay for your tuition unfortunately money is what makes the world go around but there's ways yeah. to look at money and how you, th- you, know, you can use your money for good also, yeah. bear, bear that in mind. One of the things to have a goal in business is to be so successful that you can help more people. No? Yeah. Because uh, it means I, I want to be, be rich. I want to be rich. I want to be rich. That's fine. you know that's not to say that that's a horrible thing. But if your thing is I want to help people, uh, I'll be happy if we can employ people and just treat them well yeah. and they succeed in life. Then good. If you make happy customers, then good. You know, discipline. We tell our my my son here because my kids go to Southridge, which is a very virtue oriented school. Um, I, I, I also came from there, so we regularly remind us. So, what's discipline? You know, it's, it's doing the right thing even when no one is looking. So it's also it's so when in business also, even if your investors, your business partners are not always looking at your books or asking you things, you have to be able to do the right thing. You know, you have to yeah. be able to sleep at night saying, I took care of the people. The, the stuff is there. Wala akong dinaya. Okay? Uh, yeah. Di mo dinaya customer mo. Di mo dinaya yung tao mo. Di mo dinaya yung mga business partner mo. Yun lang yun. So everything else, I think, you know, it's to follow. But um, it's not a bad process. Not always happy-happy. There will be stressful times. Um, my suggestion lang is to anybody who's going into business is do it for the right reasons. Um, don't be afraid to ask for help and support from the people around you. There are people. Don't be. Minsa kasi sa Pilipinas na hihiyatayo eh. Feeling natin sa binantao tanga tayo or humingi tayo ng something. No, no. We, we have so many friends who are so good at different things. Okay. Um, the other thing lang is be 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 wary of the people who always just ask you for a discount. <laughs> you know, if if, if 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 your friends want you to succeed, they they'll, they'll pay the right price for your your, your services, and you, you, you can help them. That's right. That's right. Then I hit pa si mga post ng mga friend ko sa Facebook, mga mga photographer ko wawa de lahat gusto libre yung service nila. But anyway, so yun lang. Be be disciplined, treat people well. Um, go into business for the right reasons. Um, and it will be good, it will be bad, but just keep at it and take care of the people. Yun lang. Let me have uh, asked uh, the wrong excellent, people to right? to tell us about how to run a business because I was thinking like you're going to be talking about cutthroat ways of uh, you know maximizing no, profit. No, no, that, that's, that, that's that's why I'm worried my family is watching this and I'm going to be fired tomorrow, guys. I, I, I think I just lost my job. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, you know, like I said, but like I said, it's yeah, it's yeah. there's no it's not the right or the wrong way. This is just how we we operate it. Other, there, I have friends who are wow. hugely successful who do it completely differently. Yeah. Um, there's you know there's different schools yeah, yeah. of thought and learn from many people and choose what's best for you. Yun lang yung important. All right, uh-huh. Miguel, yeah. thank you so much for that. Eric, how about you, bro? Uh, first of all, uh, like, I'd like to acknowledge our yeah. friend, no, si David Tuaso. No, he's saying that oh, yeah. uh, it's his favorite episode so far. Very David. informative and very inspiring. Thank you, David, for supporting the show. And actually, David thank and I know. are, I know, and, and another like some group of friends also are. Coming up with a new business, also. Ooh, oh, wow. uh, we're on the we're on the final stages of completing the website, and David is is, is our 
Amazing. designer, website designer. And yeah. he's, he's been a big contributor. Uh, I think taking up, uh, parang thinking of uh, my experience, no, kami ni David, we just sat mm-hmm. down and talked about it and just went for mm-hmm. it. Tara, let's do it. Try, try lang natin. Yeah. Malay mo. Ma- may mga ganun eh. And sometimes in business, yeah. you really have to take that leap of faith. Pag yeah. may nakita, may nakita kang demand, parang may nakita kang opening na parang, parang, parang okay to sa na, nating gawin. No? So let's, it's something yeah. that, you know, I think people should be doing more that leap of faith. Just as long mm-hmm. as medyo planado, you, you have to get into the plans also, no, in, in, in the planning stages. But, you know, uh-huh. uh, every successful business man took that first step. So parang, I don't know, go lang. <laughs> so, you know, we're, I'm, I'm really hoping <laughs> that the business that David and I are, are planning would actually uh, start already because it, it, it has uh, encountered so many delays. Um, hindi pala madali. Uh, that's also one thing. Hindi siya madali yeah. to, to start up a business. There are so many things that uh, parang hindi mo naisip. It just jumps up and bites you in the ass. Diba? But, but, but you, you take care of that naman, uh, as you come along. No? And kami lahat, yeah. first time in doing business, uh, like a business, first time doing this. So marami kami natutunan and it's been exciting. Yeah. So I guess yun lang yung parting words ko, no, for people who are watching. If you're planning to do the business, uh, planning to do a business, just go. Go do it. And yeah, then learn about it. it. Learn learn as you go. Uh, improve as you go. And then, I don't know, just have fun. Just have fun doing it. Yun lang important. Yeah. You know what's well, great about what Eric, you just said? Eric, don't listen to us, huh? Don't listen, don't. Eric, uh, you, should, you should have told us you're starting a business, Puchik. We'll give you all the wrong advice. Pala. Mali, mali pala. what's great about what Eric said, uh, you know, sort of like going day to day, Diva, when it comes to uh, um, setting up a business, uh, taking a leap of faith. Uh, there's a there's a good uh, number of people who've become very successful who did it, did it who did it the same way. Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook did it that way. When he started off without really knowing where the the company's gonna go, and they took it day you know day after day, and then they just made adjustments along the way. You know, there's no I guess it's true, John D. Right? I mean, M- Mikael, you guys both uh, have bigger operations that you handle that you manage. It's, there's no such thing as a is there such thing as a five-year plan, a ten-year plan for a business? Well, I think one thing I forgot to touch on, yeah, but okay, Kanina, yeah. is I'm not very scientific when it comes to business. No, I, I don't have a, a very... A, a, so example, lang, if, like when I'm choosing a new location for an Auntie Anne's or whatever, the mall offers me a space. Other people do a lot of research, science, and all sorts of whatever it is to it. I generally stand there in that spot uh-huh. for a few hours, have a coffee nearby, talk to the other retailers in there, um, we, like, like I mentioned, Rod, he'll go and ask them. Or he'll talk to the other Tindera there and ask questions. And then I have a gut feel. By the end of my first hour or so there, I already tell Rod, okay, we're going to take this spot um, <laughs> or, or, or not. But, you know, because there's really a science that normally you count, you do some, you know, but for us, it's a bit different. Uh-huh. And other people have a different approach. But you can have plans in your life where you set, like, goals for this is where I want to be in this year. This is the, uh-huh. But the danger lang is if you fall into the trap that it's so rigid, and you consider yourself yeah. a failure when things don't exactly go to plan. You know, they say, uh, my dad always yeah. reminds me before, pa, the best way to make God laugh is to tell him your plans, diba? Um, <laughs> go, now more than ever, that's really, I, I don't, but you know, so you have a plan, have a goal of where your business wants to be, where you want to start it, but don't uh-huh. kill yourself or kick yourself if it doesn't go exactly to that plan. Um, you know, I, I, I watched this YouTube guy, uh, a workout guy. I've been doing workouts so I don't get fat in the thing. And one of his videos, <laughs> it, it said my my 10-year overnight success. So I was like, oh, there you go. Because sometimes people, <laughs> they'll see, oh, oh Billy this guy was all of a sudden successful on YouTube. He's now making a fortune doing exercise. And he, he himself will tell you, it took me 10 years of pain to get to this position. Yeah. Mm-hmm. John D., you yeah. get the last, uh, yeah. the last uh, input on, uh, about uh, doing business and how to put up a, uh, you know, your own business in the time of COVID nineteen. Last well, yeah. thing, what do you want to you add know, to that? Uh, what Mikael said. 
No, no, Eric and Mikael said it so well already. You know, uh, uh, opening up a business, uh, it's ordinarily already a leap of faith. But then to open a business here at the, uh, after uh, COVID-19, I think it's even more important now. Because see, we have to show, we have to, show um, to ourselves and to one another that you know, we're not going to let this defeat us. And one of the hardest things in life is really to start up a business because you know, you're not just bringing uh, life and joy to you, but you're bringing life and joy to others. So if you want to take that challenge and if you want to really make a difference, then you, know, you take that leap of faith and then you do that business because you know, after all, um, uh, if there's something that COVID has shown us, it's that you know, um, the ultimate failure is really to lose your life. For so long as we can survive this, I think we can survive and flourish in anything. So if you want to start a business, do it now. There's no better time. All right. Amen. Thank you so much, John. Ron, can I just make a shout out lang? Shout yeah, out go. To, to all the people course, who watch this. There's so many people commenting tonight. Uh, some some just uh, making fun of us, but some really serious. So shout out to shout out to Choi, another idol of ours on the football field. Si Choi idol um, and I'll, oh, yeah. I'll be I'll be my 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 Tita Marian, my boss, the the my inspiration. She lets me do my thing. Thank you so much, my family, everybody. And everybody who's taught me along the way to to help us become who who we are today, very very. Hopefully you're all watching. But if not, just remember I just shouted it out. Okay. If if I become <laughs> if I become famous from this blog one day, I hope somebody plays it back and says he did say thing. thank you to you. Oh. <laughs> That's right. Watch out, uh, James uh, Deacon. <laughs> watch out, I'm, after, I'm coming after you. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank thank you so much, Eric, uh, Mikel, John D. It's been it's one of our best shows uh, so far for Historia Futbolero. So uh, we got to say goodbye. It's been uh, it's it's been it's been great. Thank, thank you so much for listening, thank uh, you, thank and you. for for thank watching you. us tonight. Uh, we will be back tomorrow with more interesting thank stuff you. on the story of Futbolero. So this has been Ron Poblete for the guys. Uh, have a good one. Enjoy. Make sure to wash your hands, wear a mask, and keep social distancing. Good night. You. See ya. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. See you. See you.